Hey, what's going on, TLC? Is your boy PT coming at you with a word of the week. We are in Spiritual Realm 101. I left you off last time with addressing the origin story of all the bad guys. Yep. Um, last one was 20 minutes. I know it was kind of long, my bad. This one's going to be a lot shorter. So I'm going to go through the origins of the bad guys. You guys ready? Let's do it. All right, so last week we talked about the divine council and the myriads of jobs and duties that they had based on their ranks. And it's from this backdrop of um, these spiritual divine beings that we move into the origin story of the bad guys, okay? And you heard me right. This is, um, uh, it's the bad guys as in plural because we have to understand that there wasn't just one rebellion that happened. There was three rebellions that happened okay because the three rebellions gave us one the origin of the first rebel that's what we know as the devil or satan the second divine rebellion is where we get the origins of the demons and the third divine um rebellion was where we get the origins of the rulers and the authorities okay so let's go through each one first satan devil what does the bible say to us what does the bible tell us first genesis 3 1 it describes that this rebel was a serpent that tempted Eve. He said, you surely will not die if you eat from the tree of, of, of uh, knowledge of good and evil. Right? Now, from Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12 to 14, as it references this primeval story, it tells the idea of that this being in the garden was a guardian cherub. And we remember from last week, a cherub's job was a throne guardian. A cherub is one of those only spiritual beings that have the six wings. With six, they, with two they fly, with two they cover their feet, and with two they cover their eyes. Right? They're the throne guardians. They were um, guardian of sacred spaces. Now, in Isaiah six two, it gives us the picture of a seraphim. Okay, the seraphim that met up with Isaiah in the throne of God, the throne guardian that looks like a guess what? A serpent, right? So um, this is a kind of like a, a, a um, Egyptian kind of a looking um, picture of it, representation of it. Now, what does this implication tell us? It tells us that one, Eve wasn't afraid when she met this serpent in the garden, right? Because why? Because the garden was the area where um, God dwelt. So there are a lot of spiritual divine beings moving in and out. So this is not about zoology. Eve didn't see a actual serpent. What she saw, right, the implication was that this was a divine spiritual being, specifically the throne guardians, one of them. What's wrong with this guy? He had a hubris towards God and he had an antipathy towards humanity. Reason being was that God has made these human fleshly beings these guys with physical limitations because they weren't spirit he made them almost in equality to the spiritual divine being so there was a there was kind of like a, a pride towards god that he can become like god and even a hatred towards humanity okay his rebellion of the spiritual realm his rebellion resulted in humanity's forfeiture of everlasting life with their creator. And this is when the New Testament writers declares him the God of this world. That's the devil, Satan. You guys get me? All right. On to the second rebellion. Okay. Second divine rebellion is where we get the origins of demons. You're looking at this picture and you're like, why is there a humongous dude and some guy and girl? I'll tell you why uh, there's a giant man in this picture in a second. Okay. First, what does the Bible tell us about this, uh, this, this second divine rebellion? comes from Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 through 5. This is right before the flood, okay? So what we see here is the passage is telling us that the sons of God, again, turn for the rankings of those who are in the divine council, the sons of God sleeping with the daughters of men, divine spiritual rebellion. These guys rebelled, okay? And what did they do? When they came, they corrupted humanity, Genesis 1 through 5. Now, how did they corrupt the humanity? There's a lot of cultural back, uh, backdrop that, that, that comes with this story. There's a lot of context, but it's way too long for me to explain. But if you're down to hear some more, uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to do a Bible study 
a series of Bible study on this whole entire thing. So you guys can join me for that. Okay. So here we are, sons of God, sleeping with a thousand men. They corrupted humanity. They taught them, um, not in the Bible, but they taught them from this part to be wicked. And the wickedness of men was, the Bible says, kind of, which is overwhelming over all the earth. The children of this union were called the Nephilims. These were the giants, right? The giant races of that time. Ancient, ancient culture, like, <clears throat> like Babylon, Mesopotamian culture, they saw these heroes, these slash kings, as half divine, half human, right? If you ever read the story of Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh is uh, a descendant of a Nephilim because he is uh, seen to be very big, partially divine, partially human, okay? Biblical writers saw the Nephilims as beings who created destruction on earth. So they weren't seen as heroes and kings. They were seen as destructive beings, these giants, okay? So one, these giants, they can't be in heaven because this is the realm of divine beings. And then they can't be on earth because this is the realm of human beings. They're mixed blood, right? They're unclean. So what this is, tells us, in death, they are the unclean spirits looking for possession of a physical body. If you ever read the New Testament, you're going to see all these things about unclean spirits. Why are they unclean spirits? Because they're mixed blood spirit. They're not fully one um, essence or the other. They're not divine in terms of the spiritual realm. They're not human in terms of the human realm. They are the mixed unclean. Okay? And so what I'm getting at is demons are pretty much the disembodied spirits of the Nephilims. Therefore, these guys aren't as high in the tier of bad guys, okay? They're the mixed race. How did we come to that conclusion? Like I said, there's a lot of back, uh, um, backstory to explain. And if you want to get more and more into details about that, and you want to know the origins of all that, September 4th, I'm doing a whole entire series on uh, spiritual, uh, spiritual realm for a lot, as long as it takes me, and it'll get deeper into this context, okay? So the demons aren't the ones you should be afraid of. The ones you should actually be afraid of are the ones who rule, okay? So here in this picture, you got the sons of God, the daughters of men, and these are the Nephilim in the background, okay? But the ones you should be afraid of, the bad guys that you should be actually fearful of are the rulers and the authority. This is the third divine rebellion that occurred, okay? So what does the Bible tell us about these guys? What happened here? This happens after the flood, Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Um, after the flood, the nations, the, the, the sons of Noah, right, they became nations and they decided to build a tower called Babel, at Babel. And this was a move that was a sin to God because it was, a, it was man trying to move into the divine world. It was here, they're on earth, but they're trying to think that they can go to heaven. Right? They can be in the midst of the gods, in the midst of the spiritual realm. And there was, a, there was a separation that God had there. So this was considered to be a very huge sin to God. So God did what? He scattered them and he confused their language. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8 through 9, which we talked about in the previous um, um, word of the weeks, is that God assigns the nations, all these nations, as he scattered them, he assigned all these nations in accordance to the sons of God. Again, that term comes up. Who are these sons of God? the spiritual divine beings to watch over these nations. So God says, you know what? If you don't want me, I'm going to scatter you across nations. I am going to assign you um, the, the sons of God, the, the ones who are going to watch over you. And the intention here was that as you are being led or as you're being watched over, you wouldn't automatically seek after me again through Israel through Israel, through that one nation that I have chosen. Because you guys have all this inherited to me. I have chosen Israel, and through Israel, you will come to seek me. Okay, that was the original plan. Now, what happened here? What ended up happening? Bad things happened. Psalm 8, 82 verses 1 through 8 tells us that these divine spiritual beings, these sons of God, ends up transgressing against God. And what did they do? They sowed chaos, and they made humanity worship them as gods instead of turning to Yahweh. So these spiritual divine beings, instead of um, watching over these nations with justice or care or whatnot, they end up becoming the gods of these nations. They end up being, they end up seeking the worship of these nations, right? And they turn all these nations away from Yahweh, okay? And this is where you get Paul saying our struggles are against what? The rulers and the authorities, these spiritual divine beings rebelled and they became the prince slash ruler over the nations as seen in 
Daniel chapter 10. All right. So these are the bad boys. They call the shots. They create the narrative. They manipulate and they speak into every single age. They turn each generation further and further away from our God. These are the guys that rule the nations. And these are the ones that have the most power. Okay. And these are the ones that we are always struggling and fighting against. Okay. So, so we got three divine rebellions. We got three origins of evil. The question is, what's the goal of the bad guys? Right? Aren't they all screwed over because of Jesus? What's their plan now? What are they up to? Okay. Tune in next time and I'll tell you the plans of the bad guys. Love you guys. Remember always spread love, not fear.